good afternoon everyone uh, my name is udaya and i am a data scientist currently working at geo platforms limited i have been in industry for around 5 years now during this time i have gained deep understanding of various aspect of data science my areas of expertise lies in the fields of recommendation engine computer vision and predictive analysis i am highly passionate about about these topics and i have worked on several projects that involve use of these technologies and i hold an mtech mtech degree in the data science from witsilani so uh, in my free time i love to go for hiking and do photography that's all about me okay thank you for taking time to listen to my introduction i look forward to sharing my knowledge and insights with you throughout this presentation so agenda for today's session here is a brief overview uh, overview of what we will be discussing in each section of this presentation first we will start with introduction to deep metric learning we will discuss uh, what it is what it is and how it can be used to extract meaningful information from data in order to make accurate prediction next we will talk about applications of deep metric learning where we will discuss how it can be used in different areas such as uh, image retrieval and face recognition system so moving on we will be uh, discuss the siemens network and its different loss function such as contractive loss and triplet loss we will dive into these details and of how these loss functions work and how they can be used to improve the performance of the network lastly we will have a code walk through of triplet net training in python we will go through the step by step uh, discussing the implementation of siemens network and triplet loss function in order to train the network at the end of this presentation uh, we will have a q and a session where you can ask any question you may have regarding this topics covered in this presentation so uh, let's get started so uh, deep metric learning is a subfield of machine learning that involves learning distance metric between data points in i dimensional space so the main goal of deep metric learning is to learn the discriminative embedding space that maximizes the uh, distance between similar images and uh, between dissimilar images and minimizes the distance between uh, si uh, si similar uh, images so uh, before going to application let us see why there is a need of, for deep metric learning suppose in your organization you want to build a face recognition system in your team of 50 members you have taken uh, all the 50 members images and you have built a class uh, you have trained a classification model where it is able to detect all 50 members so now we want to extend this to other team members in in the other team members so in this case you you need to retrain the model in additional images of this uh, of the other team members so deep metric learning address exactly this issue this solves by learning the uh, similarity between these images in the embedding space such that similar images will be together and dissimilar images will be further so as you can see here the classification in this figure the classification model learn the separable features uh, while the uh, discriminative features were learned by the deep metric learning so such a way that similar images will be together dissimilar dissimilar images will be further so uh, in uh, deep metric learning such as image retrieval process where uh, in an e-commerce site you want to search a product so you, when you upload the picture the a uh, picture will be uh, sent to the model then it will give the encoded vector so that vector Uh, we, you are going to uh, find the distance between the uh, products that are already they have stored some vectors uh, similar vectors when you find the distance between that vector you will get the similar product uh, nearest five distance or nearest ten you can take that uh, vectors and you can give those uh, similar uh, images uh, in case of image retrieval face recognition system also works in similar way any face recognition system consists of two components one is face detection and another is face recognition where once you detect the face the detected face will be sent to your uh, feature extractor model that model will uh, give the encoded vector so if you have already stored some vectors uh, of similar faces it will try to find the distance uh, between the such uh, all the vectors nearest vector will be the your face uh, keeping some threshold so uh, this is how deep metric learning helps in uh, solving these cases 
so uh, uh, moving on to uh, moving on to uh, siemens network one of the popular approach in di- uh, deep metric learning is the use of siemens network so uh, there is another approach where you can uh, use the classification um, m- classification model by tuning the loss function uh, modifying the loss function uh, to use uh, cos phase or arc phase or sphere phase loss so you can read further about it but uh, in this session we will focus on only siemens network so siemens network are the type of neural network architecture that is often used in deep metric learning they are uh, named after siemens twins siemens twins is uh, it means a dictionary meaning that it is means that uh, for a twin baby born to a mother uh, sharing the body parts together uh, while uh, taking birth so this uh, siemens network uh, is uh, named as it because uh, it also consists of two identical subnetwork if you see the image and it shares the same weights so the most commonly used loss function in this siemens network are constructive loss function and triplet loss function let us look at each one of them in detail constructive loss function is the loss is a metric learning objective function where the training data uh, it will learn through the uh, pairs while uh, it will if you look at this image it is trying to minimize the distance between similar image in a vector space and it will try to maximize the distance between uh, two images uh, in a vector space so if you look at this generic siemens model where uh, uh, when a constructive loss uses two pairs uh, to train the model one is when the input 1 and input 2 belongs to the same class it will be positive pairs when the input 1 and input 2 belongs to the different class it will be called as a negative pairs so uh, we will look at uh, to the loss function here uh, this is the uh, constructive loss function we will try to understand this uh, constructive loss function so uh, this let x1 and x2 be the pairs and y be the label here so when uh, y will y is the value uh, we know uh, y is the known value when x1 and x2 belong to the same class it will be 1 when x1 and x2 be, uh, belongs to the different class that is negative pair it will be 0 so d is the uh, distance uh, between the outputs of our uh, siemens network so when you pass x1 to our uh, network you will get an encoded vector x2 uh, to the our network uh, you will get a, again an encoded vector you are finding distance between these two pairs these two Uh, vectors so d is the distance between these two pairs so we will see what happens when y is 1 that is when we are sending uh, uh, when we are sending when x1 and x2 are belongs to the same class what happens to the loss function we will see so when uh, x1 and x1 belong to the same class y becomes 1 so when y becomes 1 this uh, margin term the max margin term will become 0 so it will become d square so hence what happens here when uh, the similar uh, images are pa- positive pairs are passed to this loss function this d square dominates this loss function so hence the what will happen the network will be penalized such a way that the distance between positive pairs will be minimized so what happens when uh, we pass uh, negative pairs we will see that so when we pass negative pairs uh, y value becomes zero so this this terms becomes zero and we will get uh, this term max term so it will try to uh, max term will dominate this loss function the weights will get adjusted such a way that in uh, the dissimilar images will be moved further in a embedding space why margin is added here margin is a constant that we can use to enforce a minimum distance between them in order to consider them consider them similar or different so suppose in an embedding space let's say a uh, two data points in the same uh, different classes are very near together so uh, the margin is uh, there such a, uh, to uh, ensure uh, enforce a minimum minimum distance such a way that it will be uh, different it will be discriminative to the both of the classes so uh, this 
this is about constructive loss function i hope you understood what is constructive loss function and how it works let's move to the another loss function called triplet loss function triplet loss functions uh, is a loss function that is uh, another flavor of uh, constructive loss function where we will use three inputs to uh, train a model that is one is anchor positive and a negative so this is the anchor this is a positive and this is a negative so in while training a triple net network anchor and positive should be the same uh, belonging to the same class anchor and negative should be uh, belong to the different class so it is in an embedding space it will try to uh, reduce the distance between anchor and positive and anchor and negative uh, distance will be maximized as you can see in this figure so uh, triplet loss function compared to uh, constructive loss function uh, why it is better because it will be able to learn uh, the discriminative features so well compared to constructive loss function because it is considering both uh, anchor to positive and anchor to negative while in case of constructive loss function it is only considered uh, pairs of input like positive pairs or negative pairs so it depends on use case which one which loss function to use but mostly the triplet loss function is uh, used best uh gives best results so if we look at into a uh, triplet loss function uh what we have here is uh this is the triplet loss function f of x uh is the uh our model where uh x will be our input anchor and this will be positive and this is the euclidean distance l2 norm we are trying to find between uh anchor to positive and anchor to negative this term and alpha margin is uh, uh, added here the alpha is nothing but this is the margin margin is the hyperparameter that determines the minimum distance between the anchor and positive and anchor and negative pair that is required for the network to update its face it ensures that uh, this and this uh, should not be uh, zero uh in case uh there is a zero the alpha ensures that there will be a minimum distance so this is about the triplet loss function uh we will see uh, the code walk through of this uh, implementation of uh, triplet not uh, triplet network uh, in python i am using collaboratory notebook for this session i have uploaded a dataset called person reidentification dataset i will be using that dataset in this session so uh, you can download that dataset is it is publicly available in kaggle you can download that dataset so uh, here i am importing a tim module so this is the module that is uh, tim module is a pytorch uh, pre trained model library where you will get all state of the model uh, you can import all the state of the models from this using this library i have mounted this notebook to my drive where i have uploaded the, the data set of person reidentification data set i'll show you the images as well so these are the modules required for this uh, session like pandas and other uh, visualization libraries and deep learning libraries for required for training i have uploaded the data set in this particular path so i will be setting that path so uh and i have also created a triplets i uh, before training the model that uh, for this triplet network training i have already created a triplets called anchor positive and negative uh, these pairs i have, have already created so to note that uh, to train the triplet network it, it is very important to carefully choose the uh, triplet uh, triplets such a way that we need to have harder uh, positive positive triplets and harder negative triplet so that the model can uh, able to learn well so batch size i am setting it as a 32 so i'll be sending 32 images at once to the model and i am using uh, 10 epochs uh, for training uh, that is uh, epochs is the due uh, when all of the training data used at once is a uh, epoch is nothing but uh, when all of the training data uh, is used to train the model at one cycle for one cycle that is called epoch like that i will be using 10 epochs i will be using uh, cuda uh, for training in this csc file we will see the triplets what i have already created the triplets for this 
anchor positive negative such a way that anchor and positive are same negative will be belonging to the different classes i will read those images and i will plot it so that you can see that those images so it is taking time anyhow uh, what i am doing here is i am passing i am splitting the data set into train and thread i am uh, splitting the data set to 20% of the data set to threads size and uh, train and validation set i have created here okay here you can see the images anchor and positive are belonging to the same person and negative are belonging to the different person so here i am creating apn data set class for uh, training the model the model expect uh, three uh, pre processed images for the training uh, that is uh, three images at once so i am <clears throat> i have de defined this class as apn data set i am resizing the module to 1112 cross 1112 so the our model input size image size will be uh, 1112 cross 1112 uh, with uh, rgb image so i am also normalizing the image before passing to the model <coughs> so we will see that uh, among 4000 images we have divided into validation set uh, as a 20% and 80% of the data set is the uh, for train set so we will use and we will visualize also uh, before uh, after this train and dates train set see if you see i have pre processed all these images into 1112 cross 1112 uh, anchor positive and negative so we will load it into data loader data loader helps us to send uh, the images in batches while training the model so these are the batches and we will see the size of the image also uh, this is the we are creating the model here so as i told earlier this library uh, is having all kinds of pre trained model so i am using efficient net b0 here so you can uh, Put any kind of model like ResNet, Inception, or uh, VGG. Any pre-trained model, SOTA model, you can import it here. Uh, so this will create a model, and I am passing this out feature embedding size as 512, as you can see here. So 512, uh, what is 512 vector? When you input to the image to the model, the output what you get is uh, of the 512 byte vector size. that is what the size of the output of the model so that you will be passing to the our last function so this is the forward pass uh, so saying to the model this is a training function where i will uh, be training the in a loop of, so this is the architecture of the model efficient net architecture so we'll not go through that uh, so training function where uh, if you see this uh, we are uh, looping through this data loader and it will give the in them batches that we have defined so first we will send the model uh, anchor and uh, second we will send the positive to the same model and negative to the same model and all three uh, outputs we are passing to the loss criterion which is nothing but uh, a triplet margin loss this loss function will be get update this this is this calculates the loss and uh, it will give the uh, optimizer will update the weights accordingly during back propagation so in this session we will not try to train the model we will see how uh, the training works and we will i have already trained the model i will show you the uh, i will take the, load the model and show you the result here this is a evaluation function similar to training function it will be used during training uh, criterion as a triplet margin loss as we have seen in the uh, slides the triplet margin loss uh, this is the loss function i have imported from pytorch library so i am using adam optimizer for weight updation this is how the training is created so we will be training and until we see the loss is reduced we will be training and we will be saving the weights so uh, 
so training will take time we will not see how the training goes here i will load the already trained weights in this uh, model so let not do that uh, this is the function encoding to csv we will uh, after training we will load the model and we will uh, try to get the all the encodings for all the images that we have trained and try to see uh, try to plot it in a graph and check the nearest five uh, images that uh, we can get if it is similar or not so i have already trained this network that i am trying to load instead of training here so we have loaded the model and trying to get all the vectors here uh, from the data frame it will uh, predict the all the uh, images and it we will store that uh, vectors in a data frame 512 byte vector for each of these images i have already have the database uh, that i have predicted and stored it i will show you that so for each of these images i have got 512 byte vector if you can see these are the vectors that we have got now we will try to find the distance between each other so that we can uh, tell which uh, this function uh, will try to find the euclidean distance between the uh, two uh, vectors so we will loop through and we will try to find the distance i am plotting nearest to five uh, images in this diagram if you can see here we have the nearest five images for this person so after training model will converge such a way that uh, in an embedding space that vectors will be nearest images will be together as you can see here these person images are this looks to almost same so this is the person reidentification data set that i have used to uh, generate these embeddings these embedding model can be used in applications such as person reidentification so if i walk through that is the implementation about uh, that is code walk through so if you want to uh, build a person reidentification system first you can build a person detection model that will crop and fetch the person so uh, here this is the one which will be already stored all the uh, vectors uh, for images then you can send a query image uh, to our model uh, feature embedding model that will uh, pass to our model and we get the vectors so that vector we will query with the exist our uh, database which we have already stored those vector it will give the similar uh, images which looks to be same so if you can see here this is the probe is the test image these uh, four images uh, this we have we have already stored in our database so it is trying to find the distance between all of these uh, four images and it gave the nearest image so this can be used uh, to uh, train uh, this can be used in a person reidentification system similarly you can use for face uh, face net uh, face net popular face net model has used millions of faces to uh, train the model so it can uh, when you input a face and you can store any number of face and you can find a, a similarity between the model to recognize the face so uh, that is all about this session and uh, these are the references that i have used for this session uh, if you have any questions and queries uh, you can share so uh, so okay. is asking so can you share the source code and the presentation yeah yeah sure i'll be i have shared with the team you can share them okay the, okay, okay. Uh, prashanta is asking can it be implemented in nlp yes uh, similarly we have uh, many embedding models in nlp also so that can be used like bert is also one of the famous embedding model vertvec also is one of the famous embedding model that you can use to uh, do a similar uh, use in case of similar application you can use it 
for vector search and all we can use fias library or uh, 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 Google scan or Anoy library that will be faster for vector search. So, sir, uh, another question is from uh, can we determine also the performance of the model? Uh, we cannot uh, determine the performance like as we do in the classification model, uh, but uh, you can plot this in a, uh, embeddings in a TSNE graph or a PCA. Uh, graph and visualize how well the results are coming. Or you can uh, use a FIAS or any uh, vector search al algorithm for, uh, uh, and you can set a threshold and uh, determine the performance. Thank you everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Anil.